Okay guys, this is it. This is my fun little project. I'm doing this little wooden crate. We Stampin' Up! came out with this wood crate framelits die set in the annual catalog. And it is so versatile. There's so much you can do with it. And I do not use it enough. I'll be completely honest with you. I've made one other project with this crate and thought we need to do some for the holidays. So we're going to make this little wooden crate. And I've got some lint Lindor truffles in there and I think that they would make just adorable table favors think about your holiday table set with one of these at each place how cute is that I also did a wreath version hold on I'll see if I can find it so I can show you all right this is the version I did with the wreath I used the painted harvest sunflower stamp set and made a little Christmas wreath and did some of these too. So really, really cute. Simple, easy. You could take a bunch of them and leave them on all the teachers' desks or um, all your office mates. They come together really fast. But we're going to work on this one, this version today. All right, let me show you the products that I used, the Stampin' Up! products that I used for these. And then we'll get started crafting. Give some people some more time to get in here before we get started. All right, so I already showed you the wood crate framelits, and I'm also using the labels to love. Thank you, Darlene. I think they're pretty cute, too, and they come together really fast. All right, that's labels to love, and the labels to love coordinates with the everyday label punch. And then I'm using an oldie but goodie, an all-time favorite, cookie cutter Christmas, and my cookie builder punch. Uh, let's see here. What other little supplies do I have for, to share with you? My stampin' pads for the project are Garden Green, Soft Suede, and Real Red. Oh my goodness, I'm glad I could help, Darlene. This is real, these are really fast and easy, and they sold well. The um, gingerbread and the reindeers sold a little bit better than the wreaths. I had some wreaths left, but my gingerbread and reindeers sold out, so I made a, I'm making a few more. Um, my Stampin' Up! supplies. Let's finish that up. I've got some of this Wood Textures Designer Series paper. And I'm going to show you how you can get a full crate from one piece. Because if you look at that crate, you think, oh, that might not fit two pieces. But I'm going to show you how we can do a whole crate from one piece of six by six. I've got some um, eighth inch Real Red Ribbon, Real Red Cardstock Scraps. We're going to do the reindeer one. This is for his nose, so any piece will do. Look at this funny looking one. Um, some Whisper White cardstock for our label. And crumb cake. All right, I've got a couple of things that are... Oh, I've also got my um, 1 8 inch hole punch. And I've got some craft shredded paper just from my Dollar Tree. All right, let me get my big shot in here, and I'm going to start by die cutting this little guy and showing you how to do two sides, two halves from one piece. Hey, I just saw a thumbs up. Thank you. I like that. I get so nervous before I do these things. I've been doing them for a while now, but I still get so nervous. So your comments and your thumbs up and everything really help me to feel like I'm among friends. So thank you. All right, let me move this guy out because we're going to work on this one. And let me grab my big shot. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, this is the bag I like for the crates. It's the Stampin' Up! 6x8 cellophane bag. And it just holds them really nice. It's crisp and clear and makes a nice presentation. Keeps everything tidy and gives you a great place to tie that tag. So let's grab one of those. All right. Here's my big shot taking up the whole scene. And you know what? Let me turn it this way too. Otherwise, that's going to be awkward. All right. So, big shot, wood textures, paper. Got my machine set up for die cutting with the thin die adapter on top of the platform. My wood grain paper. Now, we want to drop the little crate die on. And keep in mind if you're using any sort of a pattern paper the direction of the paper and I want the wood grain 
to go in the direction of my crate. So I'm going to check, do that first. And you want to put it all the way into the far left upper corner. I got a little bit of low-tech tape to keep it there. It's really important that you cut it all the way up and to the left if you're going to get two sides, one full box out of each 6x6 six six sheet. So we've got our little dude here. So if you're using a 12x12 12 12 paper, you should be able to get four crate boxes out of a 12x12 12 12 paper. So not too bad, especially if you're like me and you're doing craft fairs, getting four boxes out of one sheet of 12x12. 12 12, or one box out of every 6x6 six six is a nice little deal. All right, so we've done our first side. Now the trick to getting two out of here is to now move your die into the very bottom left or bottom right corner. You want to be as far down in this corner as you can get without going over. And you're going to cut out just a tiny little notch here. But don't worry, it gets covered up in the end. And we've just gotten the full box out of one six by six sheet. So we cut that little guy out and I'll show you how it comes together and still looks absolutely complete. You don't have to worry about that little that little notch in the bottom. So we have one piece that looks like this, and we have one like this. All right, let me grab a bone folder and we'll put this guy together. Here's our pieces, here's our project. And if you look at my project here, you can see the bottom of my crate doesn't show any worse for having cut both pieces from one six by six. So what we wanna do is work our scores with the bone folder, and then I'm gonna use tear and tape to put this together. You can use multi-purpose liquid glue too, but I like how tidy tear and tape is. It's one of my favorites, I love the adhesive. I buy lots and lots of tear and tape. Okay, so there's one side. Here's the other. All right, and I do like to work my designer series papers both ways because if the paper fibers stretch and the pattern cracks, then it's on the inside of my box and we won't see that. So now, this is the inside of the box, and this is the inside of the box. We need to keep the paper um, right side up and lay out how they're going to go together so that we get the adhesive on the right sides of the tab. Now, one quick thing I want to do is just add a little handmade stamp and the Stampin' Up! copyright to the bottom of this because I'm going to sell this one at a craft fair, so it needs a copyright stamp. All right, now we're done. Back to the inside of the box here for a minute. And get tear and tape. Okay, so we've got our two pieces. This is the inside of the box. What we want to do is put a strip of tear and tape along the outside edge of the bottom of the box, okay? Now we're going to flip right over left, and we're going to flip right over left. This way our box will go together right side in with both of the correct patterns on the outside. I'll put that back in the picture for you so you can see what we're making if you're just joining us. Now, on these tabs we're going to add some tear and tape on all four tabs. There's two here, put that back the way it belongs. Let's not twist it around. If you can't tell, I've put together boxes that had the wrong pattern out on one side. So I've developed this little system. Now we're going to tear and tape this tab and the bottom one. All right, so our adhesive is all where we want it. Let's kind of burnish it down. And we're gonna pick up 
the adhesive on the top tab first. Hey, thanks, I just saw a thumbs up. And we're going to adhere the two pieces of the box together. Then we'll pull this adhesive. And I like to do them um, in order, like one at a time, so that I don't have it stick into the table as I'm working and stick into my sleeve. So if you take off the one that you need, the tear and tape's a little wide here, so I'm just gonna fold it and then adhere my box. And notice that I'm lining up the bottom corner with the bottom corner of the score here because the handle comes up a little bit. It doesn't match up even across the top. If you put it corner to corner up here, you're gonna have a lopsided box. All right, then the next thing you wanna do is peel the adhesive off of this tab. And then you're gonna slide this one with the little cut inside and burnish this down. See how cute it's coming together? Nobody's ever gonna see that once you put the shred and the candies in and you got a full box out of the sheet. So we'll pull the adhesive from the inside tab and from our last side tab and just slide this little side tab down into the box. And we're gonna burnish that one down. And then this tab right here goes down along the end. And I like to take my bone folder and just burnish those adhesives down. So there's our little crate, isn't that cute? Now I've got some shred that'll boost up our candies and completely hide that little cutout on the inside. And I've got little lint chocolates, three of them fit perfect in here. There's one on my blog where I used these fun like candy powder, like almost pixie sticks kind of big fruits and they were so cute in there too. All right, now let's get our tag in our bag. So I'm gonna bring in my ink pads and we're gonna do a, a bit of stamping. I need soft suede and real red and garden green. This is what we're making. And my stamp of pierce mat. Okay, the little reindeer here, we're gonna stamp in soft suede on crumb cake. And I see this all the time, but I say it kind of as a reminder to myself, check the orientation of your punch. How does the paper go in? And which way do you need to stamp in order to punch easily. So we gotta stamp this guy upside down to fit in the punch. And then I'm gonna just do a quick wipe here because we're going to ink his nose in real red. So let me slide this aside, bring in this fun scrap. Look at that. That's one that was Dustin for the garbage bin, but look at that. It's gonna make a perfect Rudolph nose. All right, so there's our little nose. Now we've got some Whisper Whites for our label, and I've got these two stamps from the Labels to Love, and we're gonna use the outline and this Happy Christmas to you and yours. I like to do my outline in Garden Green, and my happy Christmas in real red. I'm going close to the edge there, make it easy to punch. Hey, Gina, how are you? Thanks for joining me. All right, and then my happy Christmas banner. Ink that up in real red. Stamp it in. I just inked my real red. Let's see how it stamps. Ah, not too bad. Good. All right. I almost knocked you guys over. All right, let me move that one out. An everyday label. We're gonna pop this guy out nice and easy. I love this. This is such a cute way to make gift tags and embellish up all kinds of little treats. I love this set. Labels to love and everyday label punch. That leads me to my kind of sad news. Stampin' Up! today started the end of the year um, overstock sale, which means that now the holiday catalog items are while, su while supplies last. 
So if you like this um, labels to love, if you like this everyday label punch, if you like anything that you saw in the holiday catalog, there are a few things that are carrying over. I don't remember exactly what they are right now, but for the most part, holiday catalog has just become while supplies last. So get your orders in because when it's gone, it's gone. Stampin' Up! won't make any more. So that's... Uh, that's the deal today. There's a small um, sale that's going on right now on Overstock. Uh, but that's that's it. If you love it, get it before it's gone. Now I've got my Stampin' Dimensionals here. And I'm going to add the Stampin' Dimensionals to the crate, not to the label. Because we want the adhesive to be fully on this little middle plank here. So two little Stampin' Dimensionals. Reach in and give it a squeeze so it adheres well. And then peel. And we're going to stick this onto the crate now centered. Okay, so there's our dude. Oh, Gina, you're welcome. Thank you for taking me up on the Black Friday online class special. It was eight classes, and I did um, for um, $39.99 for Black Friday. I hope that you enjoy them, and if you have any questions, let me know, okay? Thank you for being part of my kitchen table stamper business. I appreciate it so much. All right, so we've got our little crate all put together. Let's talk about our 6x8 cellophane bag now. I've got this one. It's a Stampin' Up! bag, and it looks a little flat and wide for this crate, right? But it really is the perfect bag. And let me show you how, what I like to do here. I'm put my hands into it. And I'm going to pinch the corners and almost make like little cat ears here. Do you see that? Do you see my little clear cat? So I got my little cat ears. And now I'm going to grab my tear and tape. And one cat ear stayed and one didn't. But I've lost my tear and tape. Has anybody seen it? All right, here it is. And we're going to put, uh, what is that? Maybe three quarters of an inch of tear and tape right on the seam inside this ear. Ah, uh, thank you, Gina. I'm making these for craft fairs and um, sold out of them at the last one. I've got another show on the 9th, so I'm making a few extra for this show and thought, what a good thing to go live with. Very seasonal. All right, so see how I just taped down the little cat ear? We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to pinch it so it looks like a little cat's ear. And then we're going to add a little strip of tear and tape. Peel it off. And I put my hand back in the bag. And do you see how the seam goes across the bottom of the bag and up the side? We're going to match up those seams and then just burnish down. Now we've made ourselves a little flat bottom sack. Do you see? We can turn this little fold and make kind of a gusset. Ah, thank you. I like the little hearts. And it's the perfect bag for this crate. So let's go ahead and drop our crate down into the now flat bottom bag that we've got here. I'm losing one of my candies. Get in there, everybody in. Okay. All right. See how perfect that sits in there? It's exactly the right size. It's flat on the bottom now. It's a crystal clear, beautiful presentation. So what we'll do is take this side seam and tuck it in. See, so now we've got like a little gusset. And we'll take this side seam and tuck it in. And that's really nice and tidy. I'm going to gather it up and tie it with some of this 1 8 inch real red ribbon. Another product from the holiday catalog that you'll want to grab up if you want it before it's gone. While supplies last on the holiday catalog for anybody who's just joining us, Stampin' Up! announced it today. You can check out marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click on the sale, see what they've discounted, and see what's going away. Um, I should also tell you, I should have said this towards the beginning too, we're doing our first Stampin' Bingo at kitchentablestamper.com. And I am so excited about it. I canceled Wrap It Up for the Holidays to do Stampin' Bingo. And um, I have 12 seats and more than half of them are sold. So if you're thinking about Stampin' Bingo, you got to register by tomorrow. And um, we're going to have a great time. I'm so excited. I'll show you the projects after we finish this one. 
Stamp and Bingo almost sold out. Email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com if you want to join us if you live in the Chicago area. All right, so we got our little reindeer all punched out. And I'm going to fussy cut his little nose that I've lost. My goodness, I keep losing stuff today. Here it is. I've seen his little nose with the red glimmer paper too, and that's really cute. You can stamp it on the back and then cut it out from the back and then flip it over and glue it on. Very cute if you've got some of that red glimmer paper. Oh my goodness! Darlene, your tip is amazing. I'm going to repeat it because this is going to get archived on YouTube. I guess you can cut out the nose with the bottom of the foot. Well, can we try that, everybody? Hold on a second. Let me glue this down. You've got to be kidding me. I've been fussy cutting all this time and we don't have to. I'm going to look. All right, mini dimensional. We'll do that after we finish the project. Um, Gina, I am not doing the first bingo on Facebook, but um, next year in the spring, I'll be doing another bingo. Well, maybe not the spring, like February, I'll be doing another bingo, and I'm going to try and include online for the one in 2018. So this is my first one, so we're going to run it just in um, person for this time. Uh, okay, so our little guy. Now, what I like to do with the reindeer is pop a little one eighth inch hole right here between the antlers. So when you slide the ribbon front to back, or excuse me, back to front and tie a bow, it looks like she's got a little bow on her head. It's kind of a natural way to tie this tag on. All right, so back to front, slide through. And I've got way too much ribbon here. You can use far less than what I cut. There it is. You don't want to pull it too tight because you'll bend their little faces. But there it is. Isn't she cute? Oh my goodness, with a little bow on her head. All right, trim off the excess. Don't make this much excess. What a waste. There we go. And there they are. There's the little cuties. All right, let me get the gingerbread one back in here so you can see. Here's the version with the gingerbread. And if you're interested in having this project sheet, you'll find it later today, maybe tomorrow morning, because I am trying to be crafty today. Um, but kitchentablestamper.com, I'll make sure that the tutorial gets up there so you can just print it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Gina. I just, um, I was looking for ways that I could make um, craft fair stuff and make you know, quantity kind of quickly. And these guys are just the best little tag. I did them on pencil bags and on a couple of other things. All right, so we're gonna try Darlene's little tip here. Let me move these guys over and see. So I stamped the nose again. And Darlene was saying that if you use the punch, you can punch it out and you don't need a fussy cut, but I don't know how. So would you punch it this way? I'm gonna come back here with my little scrap. Um, hmm, I'm so confused. All right. Oh, look at that. Is that what you're talking about, Darlene? That's brilliant. The bottom of the nose in first. Ugh, my crazy scraps. I was being all economical and using the crazy scrap, but I can't keep a handle on it because it's catching on everything. Ha ha. So if you get that little guy right in there just right, and I got shaky hands from all the coffee, <laughs> and then you just have to cut across the top. Oh my goodness. Darlene, where were you last night when I was making a dozen of these? That worked pretty good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Darlene Boardman, brilliant. There's the little nose, and all you had to do is cut across the top. Genius, right? Oh my gosh, I have the best friends and viewers. There's the nose. All right, so there's a bonus tip from Darlene Borman, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you guys. <laughs> I have got a ton of crafting to do. I'm going to be at Fremd High School, if you're local, um, Palatine. Uh, Fremd High School, December 9th, for their Boosters Craft Fair. Stampin' Bingo is December 14th at 6 o'clock, and I have, I think, four seats left. Let me show you the projects.
up the projects on the floor, you know, whatever. Okay. So, Stam and Bingo, we are going to play a game of Bingo and then make snowman soup. And this is available on kitchentablestamper.com, this little principal poem. And you can cut it out with the second largest stitched oval. We're going to play around a bingo and then make this fun little stocking stuffer. And then we're going to play around a bingo and make this cute little gift card holder with some coffee candies inside. Diane, are you going to be there for bingo or for the craft fair or both? I know you paid me for bingo. Thank you. I can't wait to see you. All right, so there's coffee candies and a little gift card to slide right back behind the label. And then we'll play a cover all round of bingo for the grand prize. And I think it's going to be a really fun night. Four seats left, so if you're thinking about it, you can check out the um, information on kitchentablestamper.com. It's December 14th in my Rolling Meadows home studio. We got a great group of ladies coming. All right, let's put back what we made today, and I will get some pictures and project sheets all done for this and get it up today or tomorrow morning. All right? Thanks for stamping with me, for having a crafternoon with me, girls. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who's watching. Maybe we have some gentlemen stampers. Okay, if you've got any questions about the project, Stampin' Bingo, Friend Craft Fair, Stampin' Up, the holiday catalog while supplies last. If there's anything I can do to keep you crafty, email me, Marissa at Kitchen Table Stamper. Thank you, Diane. I can't wait to see you on the 14th. All right, guys, I'm off to go finish a whole bunch of these espresso cups. You want to see? All right, I'm going to make you all sick at the end here. I might edit this off for. Okay, ready? Oh gosh, is that an ugly view or what? Am I making you see sick? All right, this is this is what I'm off to do for the rest of the day. Do you see that? <laughs> All right, that's enough of that now. You're probably getting a little whoopsie. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon.